On Wednesday night, Nicki Minaj had a grievance. The rapper made the decision to take to social media to vent her resentment at the next generation of musicians. Welcome back it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. When Minaj unfollowed celebrities like JT and Ice Spice on Instagram, it made news at first, but she had more important things to attend to. A motherfucker tell somebody they don't really wanna sign with heavy on it. The fact that so many African American musicians are choosing to sign with record labels run by white people really bothered the young money legend. But then they'll go and sign with the white peoples. And guess who the white peoples finna call? Always. Minaj continued by drawing comparisons between this pattern and her record label, Heavy On It. How they always make sure they get attention of the barbs. She noted. The rapper took things a step further by claiming that the upcoming version of her album, Pink Friday 2, will be limited to Heavy On It Signies, the name she considers worth spotlighting. So you would be surprised. And I'm not talking about doing ad-libs on any songs. The relationship between Nicki Minaj's issues with Ice Spice and Heavy On It appears to be partly related. If their name is not on the Pink Friday 2, they're not a Heavy On It artist. There was a lot of conjecture that Ice Spice struck a deal with Heavy On It in 2023. However, it was eventually verified that the rapper Munch had signed a record contract with Virgin Records. Spice's Y2K debut album was recently released by Virgin. Ice Spice and Nicki Minaj achieved fame together with their song Princess Diana. Nevertheless, since then, there has only been hostility between the two. Minaj's unfollowing of Ice Spice on Instagram is more evidence that their relationship is strained. It's worthwhile to enlarge and examine Nicki Minaj's record contract. In 2009, the rapper joined Young Money. Although Young Money was founded by Lil Wayne and Birdman, the label is now a division of the Universal Music Group. UMG is owned by who? Grange Lucian. When Kanye West was criticizing Drake on the Like That remix, he was ranting about the same Lucian Grange. Though she may be angry at the choices that younger musicians have taken, Nicki Minaj is also accountable for the same transgressions that she is condemning them of. Lato's fanbase and the hip-hop community at large showed a lot of appreciation for her latest album Sugar Honey Ice Tea. However, happiness is stolen by comparison. Moreover, the project's first week sales forecasts, which indicate a number 17 start on the Billboard 200 chart with roughly 27,000 album equivalent units sold, were completely blown away by some of her competing fanbases on the internet, including that of Nicki Minaj and her major rival Ice Spice. Of course, given the Atlanta Femsey's level of awareness, this isn't the worst chart debut ever, but it also isn't creating the kind of massive commercial splash that she and many others had presumably hoped for. Although Lato's rivalries with other female rappers make her and them easy targets for jokes and mockery when things don't go as planned, numbers aren't everything. However, it would be helpful for everyone to keep in mind that, aside from the very top of the game, which is still seeing diminishing returns in comparison to years past, almost all mainstream artists are finding it increasingly difficult to increase their sales figures without an extensive and well-planned industry backing campaign. For instance, Ice Spice's Y2K, which debuted with 28,000 in first week sales at number 18 on the Billboard chart, places both LPs at nearly the same position even though it has around half the duration of Sugar Honey Ice Tea. Rather, longevity and how these femsies and other musicians in the business will either sustain or waste their momentum will really set apart a lot of these albums and stories. Following Lato's declaration that Lil' Kim is the real GOAT, Akbar V is defending her super freaky girl Queen's mix colleague Nicki Minaj, contending that she is the greatest female rapper of all time. The Love & Hip Hop alumna took to X to discuss her thoughts on Lato's assertion that the Brooklyn rapper is the most influential woman to have ever picked up a microphone. But like, the GOAT is Lil' Kim. She began by pointing up Kim's prior role as a cultural influencer. Lil' Kim was the GOAT her and Foxy both had they run and did a lot for us female rappers, she began before continuing. So did Eve, Missy Elliott, etc. But what about when there was a standstill and no label wanted to sign female rappers? Who came and opened the door and had the longest run in history Nicki Minaj so let's not say Kim is the goat of all time because no DCK grabbing it's at Nicki Minaj. Give that damn girl her flowers when it's due, y'all don't got to FK with each other but keep it a stack. Before realizing the influence of the crush on you rhymer, Lato referred to herself as the greatest during her complex discussion with sister Brooklyn Nicole, declaring Lil Kim to be the greatest. But like, the goat is Lil Kim. For sure. A fashion icon, with timeless music, timeless looks, gone forever be a staple, in not only rap, but female rap. And she the goat because she is a queen for real, like, off camera, she a queen I love her, and she big mama, too. It's just a big mama thing, she added in reference to Kim's 1996 track featuring Jay-Z, as well her own record, Big Mama. Now when he caught me big, 
mama, yeah, that get the coochie wet. Kim is the best female rapper in Lato's opinion, but she also mentioned Minaj and her top three back in April. However, after their social media spat, Lato declined to mention Minaj by name. Kim gotta say Kim, Lato told Atlanta's Hot 107.9 radio station when asked about her faves at the time. The Massey left eye rest in peace left eye, and shoddy.